Hello everyone, just Goran here and welcome back to another Planet Zoo real life inspiration video and today we are looking at the Amur Leopard from the Conservation Pack. I've only got about four habitats to show you so we're also going to take a look at some other leopards, basically everything that kind of resembles a Amur Leopard uh, will also be featured here. So let's get started right away. And the first zoo that we're going to be looking at today is Blydorp. Of course, we saw this in the real life zoo tour as well. But over here, Blydorp has a pretty cool enclosure with this nice netted over structure. Quite a bit of height as well. Very lush, very nice. Uh, lots of foliage in there. There's also a bit of a perch in the back made out of this like rock wall um, where the leopards do often perch on top of. Uh, you can see that right? Over here, for instance, sort of like having a bit of elevation, taking a look around uh, their surroundings. But you can also often find them kind of patrolling the outside of their enclosures, so they'll get like right up to the glass or the fence. We can also see the sign of the armor leopard in the kind of visor uh, being hunted. Uh, here's one pooping. A very interesting Planet Zoo moment right there. Um, and yeah, you can go all the way around the enclosure. There's two kind of viewing points. They're both very similar. Um, but yeah, this is actually a pretty nice looking enclosure. It's quite simple, but also yeah, kind of naturalistic. The netting is not very obtrusive and you've got the nice glass viewing areas that make it very easy to spot the leopards whenever they're not hiding in the bushes, basically. So yeah, this is the second viewpoint. Just taking a peek right there and that is pretty much it for Blydorp. So and let's move on to the next zoo already. And the next zoo is going to be the zoo of Dortmund. And Dortmund, uh, their Elmer Leopard enclosure is a little bit uh, more dated, I would say. It's this very robust square cage. Uh, this is one of two uh, kind of enclosures for it. And yeah, it's definitely a bit on the smaller side, I would say. Um, and yeah, as I said, it, it just looks a bit more dated. It's still pretty lush and it, it looks pretty good. Uh, you got some glass viewing areas as well. We got a very similar sign, um, which we'll see in a second with the kind of visor on the leopard. Um, but yeah, I didn't actually see the leopards at this zoo. Uh, they were they were hiding somewhere. Um, but here you can see it's it's nice and lush. It's it's not bad looking. It's just yeah, as I said, a bit dated. Uh, it could be bigger. Uh, it could also have a bit more height, I would say. Uh, the enclosure it does feel a little low. There's not a lot of verticality uh, places for them to perch on like they could at Blydorp. Um, but yeah, as you go around the enclosure, here you can see uh, here you can see the other sign. So again, the visor on them because yeah, they are being hunted down to extinction in a in a, in a way kind of not great. Um, but yeah. You can also get to the back of the enclosure over here. Um, no glass viewing here, just just a mesh. Uh, actually, pretty wide mesh as well, now that I kind of look at it. Um, but yeah, also over here you can see the kind of place where the keepers would be getting into the enclosure. So they've got a little protective cage over there. Um, that makes sure that if the they forget to close one of the two doors, the leopard of course still won't be able to get out. So yeah, that's it for Dortmund. Next up we have Mont Sauvage and in Mont Sauvage you're walking through this flamingo aviary and then you get to this viewing point of this enclosure. And this one is by far the biggest one that we have in this video, mainly due to the fact that this used to be a tiger enclosure and I, I'm guessing that the tigers passed away. But on the map of the zoo there's actually still, still drawing of a tiger here. Um, but yeah, it is being used for the leopards now, uh, giving them a lot more space. And I think that's wonderful. I think that definitely should stay the same because, yeah, it is just a very nice enclosure, I would say. There's a whole lot to it. You can go all the way around and, and yeah, what used to be for the leopards is still for the leopards as well. So they just got the tiger habitat on top of that, it would seem. Uh, so as we'll keep going around here, uh, we'll keep seeing more and more leopard space and it's and I, I think that's really quite great because as we'll see also as we move on to the other leopard enclosures, overall leopard enclosures are not usually that big which yeah, is a bit of a bummer if you ask me. Um, what is cool in Mont Sauvage as well by the way is that they don't only have the armor leopard, they also have non-specific leopards uh, and yeah you'll be able to tell when we get to their enclosure because they are quite apparent. But yeah, here's some 
educational signage about the Elmer Leopard. And then we can walk all the way around, actually quite a bit further after you go to the South America section, uh, you get to another viewing point. And this is what I'm guessing in the past would have been kind of the only cage. Maybe the other one we just saw would also have been for the leopards. Um, but yeah, this is kind of the leopard enclosure before they got the tigers, I'm guessing. But it is all connected to each other. So this leopard was actually able to walk from this enclosure all the way to that tiger enclosure just through a bunch of gates and things and oh my god i forgot uh, yeah this was a thing that happened here that was just absolutely awesome look at that boy <laughs> hello there i just want to rub its belly but you would definitely lose an arm if you did that so let's move on uh, to the next leopard enclosure so right adjacent to this one are the other leopards and you can see they even have a way to kind of view into the other leopard enclosure as well, but this is where you'd find the non-specific leopards. And you can see once again, they've got some kind of perches. Uh, there's a lot of like nice rock work. You do look kind of up against this brick building a bit, which is a bit obtrusive, but it's not horrible. Uh, I still think this is a quite nice enclosure. And yeah, here we can see we got a black leopard. Uh, very, very cool. Or black panther. I don't even know <laughs> what's the difference, but uh, this was super, super cool. They were very beautiful and this is probably uh, the nicest enclosure uh, in this video with a, a black panther in it so yeah super awesome and as you can see they can kind of like peek into the other enclosure as well which they like to do and then over here this doesn't have a glass uh, viewing but there is even more space for them back here so even more perches and other things i think this is a really uh Really lovely enclosure. Again, it could have some more height, but overall it's really, really good. So next up, we have Tia Park Nordhorn. And Tia Park Nordhorn um, is working on a new leopard enclosure. So I'm here a little bit too early in a way, because yeah, y y you can see why they would want to improve this. It's definitely not bad. It's kind of average with what we'll see in for the other leopards as well. And it's kind of similar to what Dortmund has uh, just with a bit more elevation actually, like the netting goes quite a bit higher. They also got a bunch of natural trees kind of in this enclosure that they can climb around in and kind of hide behind. I will say Dortmund's enclosure looks a little bit more lush than this one. Um, but yeah, I'm really curious to see what that new uh, habitat is going to look like and, and how much of an improvement that's going to be. That'll be very nice. Uh, the zoo is currently gathering money uh, for building that new leopard enclosure. And once it's finished, I'm definitely going to go back here because this was a lovely, lovely zoo. Um, oh, here we can see some cool education. Yeah, Northern was it was a very nice zoo with its kind of own unique style, very rustic kind of looking. So yeah, very cool. If I'm ever in the area, I will I'll definitely try to drop by. Yeah, we can see a bunch of shelters over here, a bunch of trees that are still kind of growing. And yeah, oh, this part of the enclosure is definitely not very high. Um, but I felt like the netting in the other part went up a bit more. Um, the enclosure, as you can see, does go on for quite a bit. Like, there's quite a lot of space here. Um, especially compared to some of the half dust we still need to see. So, yeah, overall, I guess a, a passing grade for me. But really looking forward to whatever this is going to be. The new leopard enclosure that they're gathering money for. Anyway, I'm just repeating myself at this point. So, I think it's about time that we move on to the next zoo. And yeah, that was it for the armor leopard enclosure. So now we're going to look at a bunch of different leopards. I will put which leopard we are looking at in the little thingy, uh, zoo names thing. Uh, so this is Savaya Park Beeksbergen with the Persian leopard. And they got this really nice large cage over here. Very sturdy construction. And um, we can see in the middle there's these logs that are kind of elevated that the leopards will often be perching on. There's a backstage in the back. And yeah, this habitat actually has quite some interesting history. Because at one point, this was a giant panda enclosure, believe it or not. This is before the entire cage construction was built over. It was kind of just a pit. Uh, but it was actually the first pandas in the Netherlands, believe it or not. So here we can see the habitat uh, from a distance, the whole cage structure. And that's it for the Beekse Oh yeah, wait, yeah, you can also see it from the side a bit. But yeah, that's all we could see. So let's move on to the next zoo. Which is best zoo? Not the best zoo. <laughs> and this is the uh, Sri Lankan leopard. And over here, yeah, I mean, if you've heard anything about best zoo, you've likely heard about the leopard cages and the fact that they're not the greatest. I mean, these are not big. 
it would be passable for one or two leopards, maybe. But I think there's like six of them in here. And that's just not great, is it? <laughs> it's, uh... The worst part is just that they also don't really seem to be making any effort of improving this in any way. Like, they, they build a whole new entrance with a bunch of stuff. And, and this is just still looking the same as always. Uh, like, you really don't have any money to spare for, 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 for this. It's... Uh, it just grinds my gears a little bit. So yeah, over here there's another enclosure. So they got three of these enclosures for six-ish leopards. So, two per per one of these boxes not great not great but yeah that's it for best suit let's quickly move on because i don't want to look at that anymore so next up is burger Zoo, and we also have sri lankan leopard over here and but burgers has a much more uh, much larger first of all but also a, a much more organic shape we can see these kind of metal rings around the trees and that's holding up all of the netting which is a super cool way to do it it's almost invisible really like even on this video especially you barely can tell uh, that the netting is there in some places and yeah it's just super naturalistic nice lush there's some rock walls in the background which i think is also where the backstage is and yeah you got these lovely wooden uh, sort of viewing areas and as we move around there's even more to this uh, over here I really, really love this viewing point in particular with the, the little fence over here at the front. You can see some metal beams as well holding up the netting. Uh, but yeah, this big glass viewing structure. The only thing that's a bit of a bummer here is the reflection, uh, making it a bit hard to see at this point. Uh, but yeah, when the leopards are, are up close over here, it's super cool. Yeah, the rock work in the back is also really nice. And then this over here, this used to be... An enclosure for something else, for some kind of jackal or something, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and uh, recently they reopened this as a leopard enclosure as well. So just as an additional yard for the leopards. And over here we can see that with a leopard inside even, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, super awesome netting structure. And yeah, oh, there's the leopard. Super, super cool. Yeah, big fan of this one. Definitely a very, very nice leopard enclosure indeed. But that's it for Burger Zoo, so let's move on uh, to the next zoo already. And that is going to be the Zoo of Cologne, where we have Persian leopards once again. And this is a really great example of, like, very interesting netting structures uh, once again. So as we approach, we are kind of just passing the lions, I'm pretty sure, uh, as well as the tigers. So this is kind of like a big cat area, um, but we've got these huge arches going over top of this enclosure giving it an enormous amount of height and the trees inside of this enclosure are completely encased in this netting pretty much so it gives the leopard so much climbing opportunity it's super super cool and there's a lot of reflection going on right now with the sun it's also not as lush as it would be in the summer because this was recorded kind of in february i'm pretty sure so yeah not the the best conditions definitely would be revisiting us in the summer at some point to see it in all its glory but still this is a super cool enclosure uh, definitely a big fan of that one but that's it for cologne so next up we have zoo de maubeuge and at zoo de maubeuge we have sri lankan leopard once again <laughs> definitely persian and sri lankan seem to be um, more common uh, than the others but uh, yeah this is a lovely large enclosure it does have quite a few leopards in it once again um, but they have a lot of space. I don't think they have a much separation areas. I think it is mostly just one big enclosure. So that is something that I think could be improved. Um, but yeah, over here, this is kind of the backstage building. There's a TV screen playing some videos about the leopards. And over here, we can see once again, one of those kind of cages that the keeper can step into and then go into the backstage to really minimize any risk of uh, escapes. So yeah, you see that very often in zoos, of course. Um, but yeah, as we uh, go further into the zoo and eventually uh, come to the other side of this enclosure, you see these, uh, the, or well, I say these as if there's multiple, but I'm pretty sure there's only one of these uh, viewing areas. And then we can see that backstage building in the back over there. There's some perches. They've got a nice tree that is going through the netting. Uh, and yeah, speaking of the netting, we barely drawn attention to that this video, but yeah, I haven't seen any leopard enclosures that don't have netting over top. So it does seem to be uh, that is the most 
<laughs> of course, it is the most escape-proof way of making an enclosure for any animal, really. Uh, but yeah, leopards, of course, are extremely well at climbing uh, more than any other big cat. So it makes sense that they would yeah, just net over the enclosures to minimize or eliminate any risks of uh, escape. Anyway, next up we have Mondo Verde, uh, where we have both Sri Lankan and non-specific leopards. And yeah, non-specific, I think, pretty much always alludes to uh, just black panthers and, and stuff like that. So here, once again, we have a black panther. So these enclosures are fairly new. I think it's one of the most recent additions to this zoo. Um, and space-wise, they're pretty good. They have nice climbing structures. I'm not a huge fan of the kind of building in the background. I think it looks... Yeah, I think it's a bit of an eyesore, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, here we got the leopard over there. Um, being uh, a bit curious about uh, my microphone, probably. Um, but yeah, this is uh, the Sri Lanka leopard. So they just got a, a bunch of these uh, cages. And yeah, I don't think there's too much wrong with them. I think space-wise they're similar to some of the other stuff we've seen. Maybe a bit on the smaller side, but uh, I just really don't like that building in the back. I mean, it's green, I guess, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's just, I'm just not a fan. Uh, there is also this other part over here, which is a lot smaller. Um, I guess it's just a place where they can separate if need be. Oh, there was actually a leopard up there. I didn't even realize as I was editing this video. Um, so yeah, I guess I have like three or four. Yeah. Oh well. And uh, next up we have uh, the Alvetre Zoo Munster, uh, the butcher tab. Uh, we got the Persian leopard here as well. And we've got these super awesome cages over here. Lots of height, lots of verticality, uh, just yeah, look at how high up the leopards can go over here. And they do, they love climbing up beyond kind of the rock walls that are at the bottom uh, to kind of peek over them and out into the rest of the zoo. It is really cool that you've got this metal kind of cage structure at the top, um, but it is kind of surrounded by all this lushness and at the bottom things are much more naturalistic with the faux rock walls. So I think this is a really, really beautiful uh, enclosure. Yeah, here you can see the leopard kind of all the way up on that log, kind of peeking over the walls and through the mesh to look at the rest of the zoo, which was, yeah, really, really cool to see. It really shows kind of the, the, the need of that verticality and kind of creating these perches for them because they really like that and they they really love to, to use those. So there is a second one of these as well. They got two of these cages kind of side by side. And yeah, they're very similar, but uh, here we're just showing off the other one as well. It's a bit less lush, the planting still needs to kind of settle in over here, I guess. Um, but you do have a very cool, complex climbing frame. So yeah, big fan of this, and uh, that's it. So next up, we have Natuurhulpcentrum op Beek, <laughs> And uh, this is a, a rescue center, and they have, I think, kind of African leopards. At least the sign had the map of Africa on it. Um, but yeah, this isn't fantastic. It's what I I hope that this is basically just temporary holding for them in the rescue center until they can find a more permanent housing for them at something like a zoo. Um, because yeah, this is very tiny. <laughs> this is definitely the smallest thing in this video. Um, but I thought I'd include it anyway since it is a leopard enclosure. Maybe someone's interested in making a, a rescue or something. Uh, but yeah, next up we have Paradisa where we have the Javan leopard. And this is kind of in the same area as the white tigers. So we've got these kind of Indianese uh, temples, or at least Southeast Asian temples. And I like this enclosure a lot more than the white tiger one because it feels a lot more immersive. There's a lot more kind of landscaping over here to make it super interesting. There's things for the animals to do, like there's a little hanging mat, there's a bunch of climbing. Um, but what I especially enjoy over here is just the way that the temple is kind of broken up and you can look through it and see the sky and it, it, it looks very immersive and with the netting kind of spun between these temple uh, structures it kind of hides the netting in plain sight in a way it, it, it feels like you can't barely see it like first over here on the right it's very obvious and um, but there is a lot of greenery over there as well making it look a bit more natural yeah i just think this is a really cool enclosure although it is a bit on the small side, like over here you can see like the entire enclosure really. Uh, yeah, it could use a bit more space in my opinion. 
but I think the design of it is super super cool so big fan of that and yeah you can go all the way around and as you go up over here there is even uh, the viewing from the top as well so you can see kind of those temple pillars and they're they're not perfectly aligned right it's not a complete square shape uh, that I think that also helps a lot in making this feel a bit more nat natural um, but yeah that's it for Pagadaisa so let's move on to the next one which is Pakawi Park where we have uh, Central African as well as non-specific uh, leopards. I think the uh, Central African leopard actually uh, passed away at the start of this year, um, but back when I visited, I, I was able to see it. So I'm not sure which one it is exact exactly. It might be this one, it might be a different one. Um, I think they uh, had only one that was like pure Central African and the other ones were, were mixed. But yeah, we got a bunch of different enclosures over here. It's actually not too bad i'd say um especially after some of the other leopard enclosures we've seen in this video this <laughs> some of them were so bad they didn't even make pakawi look good i guess uh, no but these are yeah average sized enclosures i'd say they've got nice climbing opportunities and um, there's this pretty kind of cool looking build building in the middle in which you get some backstage views as well uh, both for the leopards as well as the lions which are on the other side but we'll Look at that in the line video whenever that comes. And um, so yeah, here you can see some of the backstage. The backstage are definitely not the most attractive. It also smelled in here, I'm pretty sure. Um, but that was the case for most of the zoo, so no surprises there. Um, but yeah, here we can see a black panther as well. Quite a lot of zoos that have those, which is uh, pretty neat because they are really cool to see. But yeah, these enclosures on this side are definitely a lot smaller than the ones on the other side. They're also a bit more bland. So, yeah. I don't know. Uh, they definitely have quite a few leopards, which is uh, not necessarily a great thing. But over here, there's also a lot less verticality. But yeah, overall, not the worst, uh, especially for Pakawi standards. So, can't complain much there. But uh, as we wrap up Pakawi over here with a bunch of more views... Because, uh, yeah, you can go all the way around these habitats, really. Um, we are going to move on to the next zoo, and that is going to be Wuppertal. This is going to be the last zoo, actually, for this video. And they have the Indian Leopard, uh, which is a bit less common. Uh, but we are entering the Großkatzen House, uh, which is, yeah, the large cat house. And as you go inside, I'm a really big fan of how this house looks, actually. You can definitely tell it's a bit older, um, but... <clears throat> It's been decorated with all of these kind of wooden elements and that makes it look pretty interesting. But yeah, over here we can see the cages, uh, indoor cages of the leopards. And they're not, I mean, they're, they're the indoor holding, I guess. So it's not the worst, but to be honest, the outdoor holding isn't that much better. So um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a bit dated over here, I will admit. And this probably would serve much better for... A slightly smaller cat-like species or something. Um, yeah, over here uh, in the back we can actually see the Indian leopard right over there. I'm not sure how many they have, actually. I only saw the one. And actually, if they only have one, this honestly wouldn't be the worst. Because I was actually thinking, like, you've got these cages over here. Uh, these are the leopard cages. And they've got two of these, which, if they have more than one... Eh, if they only have one, it's probably fine actually, and that is quite a quite a decent amount of space for just one leopard, I would say. Again, though, in general, definitely it definitely would not have been for one in the past, right? Like, I don't know why leopards are like the one big cat that just get the least amount of space. I feel. But anyway, that's all the leopard enclosures. So we are going to wrap up this video over here. I will see you next time, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye!